Hi everyone. In this video, we're going to talk about how to make charts using HTML, CSS, and a little JavaScript to make them interactive. This particular chart here lets you take a look at three different types of measurements. In this case, I have population, housing units, and households from the U.S. Census. And then I have three different cities that I'm comparing. So at any point in time, if I want to take a look at a different unit of measure, I can adjust with the drop down and you can see this nice animated effect. In this case, the numbers on the bars represent a thousand people. So this is 842,000 people in Austin, 777,000 people in Fort Worth and 236,000 people in Lubbock. And uh, the bars also have this nice little tool tip that you can use to hover over the bar to get more information. So you're going to learn all of these features in this exercise. And I'm taking the information from the tutorial that I created on my site, Code Actually. So if you go to codeactually.com and go under tutorials, I'm doing the interactive charting tutorial. And you can also choose the code repository and go directly to the full code Take that code, copy it, put it into a text wrangler document and start editing it for yourself. So for the first step here, I've already taken the liberty of opening a text wrangler document and I'm copying the code from this first box here and putting it into a document called chart.html. And when you copy this, the numbers don't come with it. It gets put into a text wrangler document and the numbers show up here on the side in text wrangler so it just makes it easy for you to be able to see where you are in the document at any time but it really has nothing to do with it, what's in the code and right now if we take a look at this chart it's just a blue bar which is a div that is assigned to one city austin so we take a look at the code that we created for this i've got one div that has the id of bar zero and we're going to start with zero because that's how arrays start in JavaScript. It'll just make more sense when we are making certain assignments to different measures. Um, and then it's got a class of bars because we're going to have certain styles that are going to apply to all the bars and then certain things that apply to just the one bar. And then we also have a name here because we're going to do some uh, styling to the name on the page. So the next thing we want to do is create all three bars. So instead of just having one bar, we're going to do the same thing and just have all three bars. So I'm just going to replace the one bar with all three so that we'll have Austin, Fort Worth, and Lubbock represented on our chart. And so here we go, Austin, Fort Worth, and Lubbock. And while we're at it, let's put a nice title in here in our head. Fun with charts because we are having fun with charts. So we have our three bars, but they're really not measuring anything. They're all the exact same size because we've used the exact same style for each one. This bar style has the width of 300 px and a height of 25. So we're going to get rid of the width in the bars style in the CSS and we're going to assign each one an individual width. And in this case, I'm assuming that a pixel represents a thousand people. Now you can make any sort of representation and calculation that you want for the data that you have. And I should also point out that I'm putting styles in the head of the document as opposed to a separate style sheet because these are styles that just apply to this chart and they don't necessarily have to be styles that go out that go throughout the entire site. So that's why I chose to do it this way. But if you wanted to put these in a style sheet, obviously you could have these styles that we're using in a separate, separate style sheet. So the next step in the code is to add the CSS for each individual bar. And we're going to have a width for each bar that's going to determine how big each bar is. So I'm going to put that in the CSS below bars. So we'll save that and we'll refresh it on the chart. And now we have three bars and we could publish this right now. We have three bars that are each of a different width. 
that represent the population of three different cities. Now we're going to do a little bit more to style this. We don't know exactly what the population is of each city, so we can put some identifying marks on each bar and we can add some of these interactive features. But it was that simple to just get three bars on a page that would represent a chart. So the next thing I wanna do is get this body, these body styles and add that to the style area. This will just control the font and the font size so that we have a more clean looking font and we take control of what that looks like for each of our users. So that was a quick, quick change. Now we want to add numbers to our bars. And by doing that, we want to put the numbers in a paragraph within each of the bars that we've created. We want it to go inside. So I'm going to copy this whole area. All it really is doing is it's taking the P element with a class equal number and putting that within each of the bars. And that is in our HTML. So let me do that. And we'll save this and see what it looks like now. So it's really hard to see, but right here we have each of those numbers showing up in our bar. And so we want to style that a little bit differently so that it will look better and we can see it. We want maybe white letters and we want them actually showing up at the end of the bar on the right hand side. So to do that, I would come over here and because they're class equal number and we want all of them to look exactly the same, we can use one class style in the style sheet for those items. Voila, now we have uh, three numbers. They're at the end of the bar and they're white and they have a certain style associated with them to give it the desired look that we want them to have. Again, we could be finished with this chart right now. We have numbers on a bar and we have three cities, but we don't have any interactivity. And we should also, before we go on, give this chart a nice title. And I can do that in the HTML. Before we start the divs, we'll have an H1 that just says a tale of three cities. Very nice. Now, we put our data inside the paragraphs. In our chart, we actually have it here embedded inside each of these paragraphs. And that's not very helpful because maybe we are pulling data from another source. Maybe we want to use these three areas for us to be able to change our data around. And we're going to use what is called JSON or JavaScript object notation to include the data inside the code and have that pull. It would make it a lot easier when we want to change the numbers when we have new data to upload over time. So that is in this area that says adding data with JSON. And so in the script area, we want to take this information and put it in the page. In this case, we have to take it and put it below the HTML elements because everything else needs to render first before we can use the JSON. So we're going to put it here before the body closes. And we have the name, we have the population. So each city has a representation here and it's just a place where we're putting the data. The variable cities that we're creating is an array that includes multiple objects. So we've got the data. I'm going to save this. And the next step is we need to add some IDs to the bars. We have to have the bars saying bar text 0, bar text 1, and bar text 2 that's going to hold the population number. So we're going to add that to each paragraph. Um, by using IDs here, we will just use this once and it will allow us to use the get element by ID method to manipulate it. So in each one, I'm going to add ID equal bar text 0, 1, and 2. So I'm just going to copy this and come over here to the first one, Austin, and have it say bar text 0 for Austin bar text one for an ID, and then bar text two. Now again, we are really only doing 
HTML and CSS here. We're just applying different classes and IDs so that we can identify and use these things in the CSS and through JavaScript. The only script we've actually created is our JavaScript object notation that holds the data. So we haven't done anything with any methods or any interactivity yet. And uh, we should remove the original city names that we put within the divs because they're no longer necessary. We're going to pull that from the JSON. We can also remove the numbers from the divs as well. So we can take away Austin because that's going to come from our data, Fort Worth and Lubbock, and we can take out the numbers. Again, that's going to come from our data from the JSON. Now we're going to use the magical get element by ID method. We'll do the first element in the JSON data and then we'll create a loop to read all the elements. The get element by ID method combined with the inner HTML property allows you to change what is in the HTML based on the ID. So the code that I'm about to use changes the inner HTML for name zero and bar zero to reflect the first element in the JSON data the zero element. The second line adds the text to the bar zero ID. And the third line uses the style.with method to adjust the size of the bar. So if you take a look at each one of these, this has to do with cities zero, which in this case is Austin in the JSON. It sets up the name, it sets up the number that goes within the bar, and it sets up the width for the div. So I'm going to grab this. And I'm going to put this in the script area below the JSON. So the JSON is finishing at the end of that semicolon. And then I'm going to put this get element by ID series here. So you can see that it worked for Austin. And we could do the same thing for all three, have the four different elements, but what we really want to do is create a loop that will read the data into each one of them. So we're going to modify this section by adding the for loop statement and the accessor variable i to take it through the loop the number of times that there are elements within that JSON array. So I'm going to copy this and replace what's there really just putting it inside that for loop. So you can see that it has the for loop. It's initialized at zero. The length is the number of cities that are in our array. And then it's going to increment every time it goes through the loop. And it's going to do each one of these. So let's see if this works. And it does. It read the number from the JSON, and it changed the size of the bar. Just for fun, let's test it out and see if we change Fort Worth, for instance, to something else in the JSON. We'll change that 777 to 500, and let's see if that actually is reading from the JSON. And it did. So let's put it back to the right number, and we'll continue with the other elements that we're going to add onto this chart.